Right, so what I want to talk to you about today is a disease that mankind, uh, a battle that mankind has been having with a, uh, 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 for millennia with, with a disease, and the disease is cancer. Uh, um, and what I want to tell you about is some experiments we've been doing in our lab over the last few years on a new model organism to cancer, a fish, which I think will help us understand a bit more about that battle and help us maybe um, win it. Um, so the first that any of us know that we have cancer, probably, is um, if we or a doctor finds a lump or a bump on us somewhere. I, I, I found a, a bump, a lump in my neck just before Christmas. It was biopsied and I was diagnosed with Hodgkin's lymphoma. Um, when a bump is found, a lump is found, that's essentially rather late in the day scientifically. All cancers start with a single mutant cell that divides and divides and divides. When you find a bump, you're probably up to hundreds of thousands, millions of cells, and that's late in the day. We want really to understand what's going on early doors, in those early moments after the cancer cell's been born, when it's first starting to, 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 to divide, if we want to understand how to, to, to combat it better. When uh, um, a cancer has been found, it is often surgically cut out. I had uh, a surgery. Um, and after that, you have a therapy which is, is designed, chemotherapy or radiotherapy, to kill off any remaining dead cells. Or, sorry, any remaining uh, cancer cells. And, and, and those cancer cells proliferate rapidly. And so the way you kill them is to attack specifically uh, 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 rapidly dividing cells. Now, cancer cells are dividing rapidly and so are several other populations in your body. For example, uh, um, uh, the, uh, the epithelial cells in your hair follicles, which is why I'm on chemotherapy, which is why as well as attacking my cancer, my hair's dropped out and other nasty things are happening to me. So what, what we want to uncover are more targeted ways of killing cancer cells, not just any cell in your body that's rapidly dividing, but specifically cancer cells. And we, we think that our work in fish may help us first look at those early moments when cancer is initiating, and second, come up with more targeted therapeutics. So let me show you, introduce you to, to, to uh, the, the fish model, which for cancer is new, but for developmental biology, embryology, is a well-established uh, model organism. So I'm going to show you here a movie on the left-hand side here is uh, a fish embryo. It was a single fertilized egg cell sitting on the top of the yolk here. That, that cell has now divided once. And if I start the movie, I mean, the beauty of the fish embryo is it's translucent, so you can see every cell division happening. Can you see those cells dividing and dividing? Rapidly dividing, like cancer cells, but embryos divide uh, um, in a regulated way. Cancer cells divide in a misregulated way. This is building a tissue. Cancer is, is, is a bad thing. This regulated cell division is good for you. Um, can you see you're now, you've built enough tissue to, to, to envelop, to spread down over that yolk like a beanie over your head. And by the end of the day, you'll see something that resembles very much and is about to become an organism. You can see its head end, its tail end, and these little fold structures here are the somites that are going to develop into the fish's musculature. So by the end of the day, you've got something that looks like an or organism, another day still, and you have this lovely translucent uh, structure, organism that looks like and is a mini fish, essentially. And you can see right through it, the only pigmented bit is that eye. And because it's translucent, it makes it fantastic for imaging, particularly for imaging cancer. So in this next... Uh, um, Slide, I'll show you what I mean. So in our lab, what we do is drive um, cancer genes in a small number of cells. Um, as well as the cancer gene, we drive a green fluorescent protein, which means you can see those cells. So can you see uh, um, several clumps of these cells? This one here, right at the very tail end of the fish, is, is tiny. It's a single cell. So you're seeing this cell as it's first born, this cancer cell as it's first born. Um, of those 20 or 30 green clumps of cancer cells. This one's grown a bit more than this one, so perhaps there's eight cells there. Um, if you allowed that fish to grow up to an adult, 
you'll see uh, um, some, but not all of those clumps of cells, will develop into malignant cancers. Okay, now that's uh, equivalent to me when I find my lump in my... It's, it, 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 it's late. What we want to do is to look at these early stages, which is what we can do in fish. Uh, um, uh, in mouse or man, we can only look at late stages. If we want to go early, we have to use this new translucent model organism. So if we zoom in on that cell there, okay, green cell, I'm going to show you, here are four stills from that cell. It's about to divide. In fact, you can see it just about to divide. This battle is being fought between cancer cells in green and your immune system, which we've tagged up red here. Your immune system's evolved to fight bugs, to kill off infections, and it can attack um, cancer cells as well. So, so here are, 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 are four stills from, from a movie, and you can see this red cell here, this immune cell, smothering, swarming all over. He's already found, very, very early days, he's found that cancer cell. If we zoom in, and now if I play this movie, you would see that red cell um, moving over, smothering, really loving that uh, single cell, that single cancer cell as, as he's uh, uh, um, dividing. Now, if we were to play that movie, and we do play these movies now for several hours, what we can see are the outcome of that interaction between the red immune cell and the green cancer cells. And the outcome is one of two it either can be that the immune cell will kill, the red cell will kill and eat those green cells, in which case we, the host, wins the battle or the cancer is killed. But the alternative, and this happens not unoccasionally, is that that red cell will be subverted. These sneaky cancer cells will instruct, will persuade that red cell, instead of killing it, to nourish it, to supply it with growth factors that help it proliferate, grow, become big, and, and, become, and in that, that situation, the cancer wins. Okay. Now, by being able to look at these very early stages of cancer initiation in this way, we've been able to dissect out some of the molecular conversation that's happening that, that, that decides what way you swing, whether the immune cell kills or nourishes uh, um, the cancer cells. We've figured out, for example, what the factor is that's delivered by the immune cells to the cancer cells that allows them to proliferate. That gives us a, a target that we can block to prevent cancer. Similarly, we're starting to uncover ways that we can push, we can nudge the immune system to be a bit more aggressive and not be subverted and nourish the cancer cells, but rather attack and kill more frequently. And in, in those sorts of ways, we're hoping to uncover, using this new model system, uh, um, better preventatives and better therapeutics for, for curing cancer. Thanks. Thank you, Paul.